Not this one day on Sunday or, or Wednesday. He wants us to stay true to Him. And He wants us to do everything He says. And, you know, some, so many of us, we get, can, we, we'll, be, we'll Christian, but we'll get off track. And our thing is to get back on track. Amen. There isn't such thing as backsliding. Right. A lot of people say there's not, but there's a such thing as backsliding. Because even myself, even the man of God, will have thoughts come through their head that shouldn't even be there. Yeah. But if you don't advocate with the Father, you don't talk to Jesus Christ and have Him to come in your heart, He wants your heart clear. I had to pray and pray and pray for Him to clear my heart before I got here. Amen. Because the devil's out there. We have to remember that whenever he was, Lucifer was cast out, God put him in charge of earth. So why are you thinking we're having all these problems down here? Because Satan, God put him in charge of earth down here. But that's why we got to put Jesus Christ first in our lives. Amen. Because God is in, He's over Him. Jesus is going to win. The Satan ain't got to, he, he's out here fighting. There's so much stuff going around out here in this world today. There's so many problems out there. There's so many people that's out here that's fighting against one another. Uh, I tell you, this, I just don't, I can't, you can't hardly comp comprehend it, you know, with all the problems that's out here. Right. Because Jesus is our answer. But we got to bring Him in our hearts. Yes. We can't let the devil beat us because if you let just Him slip in just an inch, He's going to take over. Right. And He's going to destroy you. Yes. Because He's tried to destroy me this whole month because I've had things come against me this whole month trying to get me not to even come. But God said, you better go. Because if you don't go, you're going to get my whooping again. I don't like His whooping. I'd rather take a whooping from ten guys than take a whooping from, from God. I mean, I, I used to be in the martial arts. I've took a lot of whoopings. That's probably what's wrong with my eyes. I think I've been kicked, punched, well, kneed and everything else in both eyes. I don't know, I had to go to work and I worked, when I worked at the hospital. I went to work and both my eyes was black and everybody was wondering what the heck happened to me. And one was stuck in out because I got kicked right, in the, got kicked right in the face. After you get kicked so much, you learn to block. <laughs> I mean, it might took too long, but you, eventually you'll learn how. But John 3, I want to call Jesus' name out. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I come to you to touch me, dear Lord. Hide me behind the cross, Lord. And Lord, you just come in and let the Holy Ghost just bring out what's necessary. Oh, precious Lord, because you know how I mess up. I mess up constantly. Oh, precious Lord, but you don't. And Lord, I just want to just ask for your touch, Lord. And, and Lord, I pray that you just come down, Lord, and you just touch in each and every one here, Lord. Just press the Holy Ghost upon each one, Lord. Lord, we've already had church, Lord. I know there's a smile upon your face. Precious Jesus, Lord, just... Just touch us, Lord, and guide us and strengthen us. Give us knowledge and understanding of your word. I ask it all in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Amen. If I read a little funny up here and don't get the word right, that's because my windshield wiper just keep it kicking. So just... For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that, he, but that the world through Him might be saved. Amen. That's one of the reasons that they have ministers or pastors or a man of God. I never claim myself to be a pastor. I'm just a little small servant. That's all I've ever claimed to be. Amen. But a man that's speaking the Word of God, that's what he's supposed to be doing. He's supposed to be talk, telling the truth of the Word. You have too many preachers out here sugarcoating it. They won't speak the truth. They want to hide the truth because they're afraid they might lose somebody. They might afraid they might well somebody might walk out and never come back. But if you don't take the truth in and hear what God's telling you, you're going to be in hell. On, yeah. But there's so many people out there that's on the wrong path. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he have not believed. In the name, the only begotten Son of God. Amen. And this is, and this, the condemn, condemn, condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You know, it all the is telling us what we need to do. It's telling us, you know, that, that 
the salvation is our main goal. That's what we need. To, we got to get saved. Yes. And there's so many people out there. I mean, like myself. I'll come back to myself. I thought I was saved a long time ago when I was younger. But it took me up to when I got 50 years old to find out that I really got saved. Because I still had the same things in my heart. I wanted to go out and do the same things. Come on. When you get truly saved, you don't want to do these things no more. Right. You don't want to go to all these joints that are out there, all these uh, movies on TV that's not worth even looking at. But you don't want to do that no more. Right. You want to do what God wants you to do. Right. You don't, it just, it just, I know the devil's going to still throw things because we're human. Yes. We are human. And the devil's going to throw stuff at us. He's going to try to get us to say, never mind, don't. Don't. You don't, ain't no such thing as God. Because you know their scoffers are going to come out here now. They're going to tell you all this stuff. They ain't no God. Where's God at? All this here is going on in the world. Why did God let it happen? Uh, it's not God that's letting it happen. It's us that's letting it happen. Amen. we got to look in the mirror and see what we got in our hearts and how we're living before we know what God's going to do for us. Yeah. Because God's got the power to do everything. Yeah. He can heal us completely. He can heal me completely or everything the doctor says wrong with me. But you know, but you got to look at Paul. Paul asked to be healed, but you got to remember what Paul done. Paul killed the Jews, he murdered, and he was he was bad, man. But Jesus came to him. Why have you forsaken? Why did you do what you did to me? Prosecute me. You know, he got and he told Paul right then, said, You know you're gonna suffer for me. What do you think we're going to do? we got a past. We just don't want to live it. People throw your past up at you. That's right. They, they do that constantly. If you live the past, it's coming back one day. Yeah. Right. And they're going to hit hard on it. I, I, I don't understand it, but it will. They don't forgive you like they're supposed to. That's right. God said we're supposed to forgive and let it ride. That's what He does. He, wa- he washes it white as snow. He don't even bring it back to you no more. Amen. But you know, people will. People will bring it back and they'll keep bringing it back. If you do something that's wrong, you'll never live it down. Amen. Because the people won't let it happen. That's why where it says right here, for God so loved the world, that's how we're supposed to love each other. Amen. We're supposed to be able to die for our brothers and sisters like Jesus died for us. We're supposed to be able to die for our loved ones, our brothers and sisters. And the main thing is, you don't want to do this, but you're supposed to die for your enemy. Amen. If you got that much love, that's unconditional love. Right. For example, I got a little dog. And he knows unconditional love. Because it don't matter what you do to him, he's going to be there wagging on his tail. And that's what we need to be, unconditional. Amen. No matter what happens. No matter what our child does or whatever somebody else's, whatever they do, we got to love them. We might not like it. Come on. We're supposed to tell them we don't like it. But we can't make them stop. Right. Once you try to start making them stop, they'll just do it more. Yeah, right. And they'll keep on doing it. Because they won't listen, because I know I've got some that's like that. Amen. No matter what you say, they'll go the other way. They won't pay you no attention. But whenever they want something, or they want prayer, they call Daddy. Come on. And they say, will you pray for me? Something's going on. I said, well, yes, I will. Are you living the way you're supposed to? No. Well, think about it. You know, you've got to live for God. you got to do His will. Because if you don't do His will, He's not going to... Like in Psalm 66, I believe it's 18, He said, King David said, If you've got any sin in your heart, I won't hear you. And if you've got any sin in your heart, I mean, He hears sinners' prayer. Don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about these out here transgressions. That if you know it's wrong and you keep doing it all the time, He's going to eventually say, I never knew you. Depart from me. Go serve the devil like you've been doing all these years. And that's what he's going to do. And, you know, we just got to make sure we're strong and we're living for God and we're doing what God wants us to. I want to turn over to Ephesians 5. If he don't change me for a good order... Or we don't lose it. Ephesians 5. He had me down about five different places. 
But I know I'll, I'll go ahead and mention one. It's Galatians 6. It's talking about there on, on the things that we get out here. Like when we do something to somebody, you reap what you sow. Come on. And you're going to reap it. You might think something. You might think you're going to get away with it. That's like us. We'll be out there and we'll, we might even tell a little white lie. But God hears it. We might do stuff at our home in secret that nobody else knows. But God knows. And you're going to reap it. It don't make no difference. One day you're going to reap it. It might be the end when He says, Depart from me, I don't know you. You don't want to wait that long. Amen. Jesus said, advocate, it says, Advocate with Jesus to get to the Father. If you make a mistake, get out on your knees right then and start praying to Jesus. Because He will take care of it, but He knows if your heart's pure or not. Amen, he, he knows if you're just out here just saying, Forgive me, Lord. When He sees them tears in your heart and He knows it's clear, He'll forgive you. He'll, put his, he'll wrap His arms around you and He'll love you. He loves you anyway, but He'll, he'll show you. He'll give you anything that you ask for if you have faith and believe. Sometimes I think my faith is not good because my wife says I have more faith on others than I do myself. But I made up my mind today I was going to claim the healing. Amen. You know, I pray for others every day. I pray for her healing. I don't know them. I don't know what's wrong with them, but I still pray for them. Because Jesus knows everything. He knows all. Be ye their followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also have loved us. And have given himself for an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. But fornication... In all uncleanness, covetous, let not the once named among you become saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are non covenant, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idler, having any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. Amen. He makes it clear. If you out here doing these things, if you out here living with somebody and you're not married, you out here drunkard or whatever, drugger, all of it, it ain't just on this, homosexual, it don't make no difference what you're doing. He gives you a choice. Change your ways. Amen. Change back Amen. to Jesus Christ. Yes. Let Him take care of you because He will. But you know the devil's going to fight you. But... We can win through Jesus. Amen. By Jesus' love. And we, we can... You get out here and you can talk to Jesus. You talk to God. He'll talk back to you if you're listening to Him. That's right. Amen. Because I've heard Him talk. He's done told me to change the, change the thing I don't know how many times. And I've had a whole month. And when my eye got messed up, well, I had to call Chris and tell him. I said, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to have to have surgery or not. That's why I said, I asked Jesus, I said, take care of this. At least let me go and preach or teach the Word of God. Whatever happens after that, I'm leaving it to you anyway. It's up to you. Not me. Because if it's up to me, I'd already be dead and be burning in hell. Because I lived a rugged life. I went through some rugged storms. I fought, I drank, and I did the whole numb, the whole thing. I even got so drunk, I, I remember saying this before, I got out of the car and told the other drunk to drive. So that's pretty, pretty drunk. But you know, God had a reason for me not to get killed that day or do something else stupid because I eventually do. I'll eventually do something else. But, but I have to talk to Jesus and help Him to guide me and give me knowledge because He will give you knowledge and understanding. He'll show you what you need to do. Amen. He'll guide you and strengthen you. That's like Brother Eric. He's going to guide him and he's going to make him a 100% man of God that teaches the truth and don't sugarcoat. Amen. But that's what we've got to have. We've got to have pastors out here that won't sugarcoat. Amen. That teach the truth. I even just, I seen a word in there. It's, Programma or something like it. I, what in the world is that? I think it was in Galatians. I had to look it up. It says, A, a true teacher 
of the Word that teaches old ways, that don't try to come in and teach new ways. People today, they think because it's a new age, that God's done change. God don't change. God's the same. He don't change everything to be the way people want it to be. People want to change it to make it to their own will. They want it to be where they what, they, what it helps them to get through. But you talking about the Word of God and let Him do it, then it won't be that way. Jesus will come into our hearts. He would abide in our hearts. He will give us guidance and understanding. And He will teach us what to say. Because if you wait on it and you keep studying on something, then you ain't going to know what you're saying anyway. God said, I'll give you the words. You just open your mouth. Amen. You know, like I was saying, I, I got all them right there I was supposed to win into, but God said, no, no. You just do what I say. Amen. Don't do what you say. Because if you do, you get out here and you go to a long sermon, a long sermon, uh, people ain't going to listen to you because they're going to fall asleep or, or they're just going to get bored. Yeah. you got to get out here and let God tell you what to say. Right. Let Him fill you because He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. He says all the saints, even the saints is going to judge. They're going to judge before the end right. time. Even as they're going to judge the angels. And we're saints if you're saved. Not just the preachers. The people who are saved and believe in Jesus Christ and have Him in their hearts are saints. And the saints are the ones that's going to do the judging at the end. But we got to make sure we are. And not out here fumbling back and forth. I did that for many years, fumbling back and forth. Thought I could do something when I knowed I couldn't. But... I don't, we might not get much further. Because uh, I don't want to go past him because I don't want to whip him no, no matter where he says. So let no man deceive you. Vain words. For because of these things come up the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. If you disobey, if, you disobey, if, you, if your child disobeys you, what are you going to do? You going to let him keep getting away with it? Or are you going to discipline him? Come on. Well, you know, God says, spoil the rod and, you know, take a switch and tear the rear up. But if you do that today, they're going to try to take you to court and put you in jail. I always told mine when they put me in jail, i got to get out. Yeah. When I get out, they better be going to another country. Because I'm coming for them. And my, one of mine's like this, but he still won't mess with me. He told, he told a bunch of guys they was wanting to jump me one time. He told them, said, go ahead. I ain't messing with him. One of them did. He ended up on the ground. <laughs> but I, them days is gone. Right now, I barely can, when I get on the ground, I barely can get off the ground. <laughs> so, you know, when you get past the 60 mark, sometimes it kind of don't get so good anymore. <laughs> but I know that God's got, He's got me. That's right. And He's going to take care of me. And that's the same way with y'all. He's going to take care of you whenever you ex truly accept Him and to right. truly acknowledge Him. And He will come in and He will, he will fight for you. Yes. But well, can't nobody come against you because God will, he will shield you. Yes. I remember hearing a preacher one time that said they walked in on him. And I know y'all know him and you probably heard of him. But a man walked in him with a pistol that was standing by from here to Eric. Emptied a gun at him. Didn't even hit him. Now, what do you think was in front of that pastor? He had angels there catching them, build bullets. Because I, if I'm standing that close, I'm going to hit somebody. But if you're hitting angels, you still ain't going to get through. But you know, God is good. And He's good all the time. But we're the one that's bad. Just every once in a while, you got to look in the mirror and check yourself. And make sure you own the walk with God. And not out here scrambling through the world. Galatians is the one he preached on and I preached on it too. It says stay out of the worldly things. Amen. Get into the heavenly things. Amen. Get around heavenly people. Yes. Stay out of the crowds of the ones that you know out here are doing wrong. And if they're doing wrong, tell them they're doing wrong. In a godly way. That's right. Because if you do, eventually God's going to touch them. 
You keep praying for them, eventually God's going to touch them. Amen. He's going to put them on their knees. Sometimes it might not be the way that we want to get on our knees. But, on, you know, God's in control. Right. And He's going to be in control. And He's going to teach us what we need. Amen. But, you know, He's done told me I need to stop. And if anybody, like He said before, anybody that needs to come to this altar or any time I'm up here, the altar's here. He's still in, He's going to be in control. And He's good. And we can't do nothing without Him. But the altar's always open. If anybody's got any troubles, He will handle them. Amen. If anybody's lost, Amen. He will save you. Because God's the answer to all of our needs. You know, I've seen something where it said that we misundertake some of the Scriptures. That some people pray for a Cadillac or a new home or something. But if you get down into it, God said, I'll give you your needs and maybe the desires of your heart. He didn't guarantee you was going to ride home in a Cadillac. He didn't guarantee you was going to get a brand new home. Because there's some out there that get a brand new home and they realize they think God answered them, but they can't pay for it. God ain't going to give you something you can't handle, can't take care of. But that devil will because he knows you're going to lose it. But, you know, Jesus is our answer. Just make sure that you touch Him. And let Him touch you. Glory be to God. And thank you very much.